Richard Cheese, Gin and Juice. Um, let me crank the fucking Wayback Machine up. A fucking lot. Before all of this, before all of this, I'm talking like old. Zio's had a pair of uh, Sennheiser HD 280 Pros. He spent $80 on them on Newegg. Holy shit, that was a sale. They used to be 100 And he used those headphones, and only those headphones, for nine years straight. I'm not kidding. Attached wire, coil, nine, nine, nine fucking years, because that was obviously the best headphone that ever existed because it's a Sennheiser and they're famous. And the reason I bought them, the reason I had honed in, and I don't want to give the year, because then you'll think I need geriatric treatment, but the reason I bought them was because I was living at home, and uh, it was a small apartment, and these have 32 decibels of ambient attenuation. That's a shooting muff. Shooting muffs have 30 decibels of ambient. So when I put these on, in my own little corner, my own room, I couldn't hear shit. And i that's all I cared about. That's all I cared about in the world. And for nine agonizing years of living at home, this is what I used. Uh, it got to the point I had to change the pads once and I had to change the headband top once. And then somewhere in the ninth year, it cracked like around here. Now, this is not my original pair. My original pair is still at home. Um, I, I abandoned it as sort of like a symbol of me moving on in the world. And if you know anything about the Brainwaves HM5s, uh, this was my friend's apartment for the longest time. And he invited me over, and I came over a couple times, and he had these Brainwaves HM5s in this case that opened up, and they had these big soft pads. And those headphones showed me what was possible if I spent, I think it was $120 on a pair of headphones. It was... My mind was, was exploded, like, oh, shit. And that's what started all of this and took me away from the HD 280 Pros. The HD 280 Pros were a monitoring headphone. They still are. They were a narrow monitoring headphone with very little low end. And they clamped real hard so that you could get that attenuation. And after I figured out about brainwaves, I legitimately just stopped using them. I actually got a little bit like upset. I felt like I had been hurt. Nine years I wasted so much time with these fucking 280 Pros that are not good sounding and they're so narrow and there's life in these HM5s. Now we all know the HM5s, the Brainers HM5. They've spawned a shit ton of pads and pad things, but I don't really recommend the HM5s anymore because there are better headphones at that price range now. Skivga double lot sixes are like the goat, if I'm thinking $100 roughly close back, Sivga 006. You want to aim a little higher or lower, you can get like fucking MH751. There's a Tackstar Pro D2. There's so many options. CB1s, and I don't want to link them all again, but I'll link them all again. So, to my surprise, here in 2019, I open up an Amazon page and there's just... I, you know what kind of fucking Amazon results I get? Hey, do you like headphones? You think? Here's some other headphones, here's some other headphones. And then I see two Sennheiser HE 280s. And I'm like, they're still a hundred bucks. And then I see one that says old model. And I see one that says new model. New model, but they put it on the same page because it's got 3,000 ratings. So Sennheiser comes out, is actually, you could select old model here. It's um, the exact, actually it's 20 cents more for old model, or you could save 20 cents and get the new model. And I'm like, all right, it's time for Zeos to revisit his roots. Let's see what the new model has to do. And I'll tell you what new stands for. Neumann, Neumann. Here's the thing, Sennheiser bought Neumann. Sennheiser gave Neumann parts to build this headphone. This is my fucking baby. These are the Neumann NDH20s. These are my monitoring headphones. These are the ones that Zeos, he spent $500, and then he spent another 400 they didn't send me these. I spent $900 on this pair of headphones because I want to make that pair balanced. And I think they've been owned by Sennheiser long enough that some of the engineers, maybe they get drunk, they hang out in bars, they start talking. 
And then these get born. These are not the Sennheiser 280 Pros of old. These are not the ones I lived with for nine years. These are wholly better. And in fact, it, just before this review, I had to sit here and dual 789s, set the volumes, plug them both in. If I have to sit on a desk and compare a $100 set of Sennheisers to a $500 set of essentially Sennheisers, you should fucking listen to this video. So, as I'm rolling down the street, sipping endo, sipping on, ro someone does a rolling endo, sipping on gin and juice, uh, I put these on. And immediately there's like soundstage. And that's the first thing that got to me. I was like, whoa, I'm not trapped in this little fucking face fucking ball, which is what the old 280 Pros. Now that could have been just usage, but I'm pretty sure that was just whatever tech. They've been building these forever. So whatever they were doing to build these forever, they were still building them like that until 12 years ago when I was, when I was still using them. Eight years ago and I was still using them. So you, I put them on. And let me go over the build real quick. The box for these, I usually here keep all the boxes for everything I'm gonna review is over there, big piles of it. And I'll bring it down and I'll make sure there's nothing in it when I'm going through. So you know, oh, it comes with a bag or it comes with an adapter. And I'm looking up there for it and I realize it's not there because I threw it out. Because the box for this was so crappy and utilitarian. These are like, if you had military issue headphones, they would come in that box. It like opened up and then opened up and disintegrated and then you still had headphones. Like here's your headphones. I think it came with, it's an attached wire still, so that hasn't changed. They, they, they couldn't get that part just out. Comes with a quarter inch adapter that you can screw on. The wire is only this wire and it's not the worst one of these wires. Although those janks in there from where it was folded, I think eventually in about uh, 30 or 40 years, those will, those will straighten out and it'll look nice. But short little thing here, short lead here, I'll plug that into that. Big, heavy coil, but it's a good coil. Like it's a go way, way, like hey, like hey. I don't think I've ever done that with a fucking cable before. Um, I ruined my chair. Th that's, that's a coil. And I had more to go. I could probably leave the room if I really felt the urge to. Big hefty strain relief. You only get about that much for it coming down and then it hits this. And I remember I remember wire tying this under my desk at home. Like I had a wire tie that held that. So I had this much. Because that's all you need is like six inches of this to really deal with it. So a quality cable, unfortunately attached. And I don't usually like coiled cables, but I think it might be a little bit nostalgia. Mm. Headphone itself, exact same looking cup, different looking headband from my original. Uh, first of all, it's basically a built-in Dakoni Nuggets. And it, the pads and the top use this material that looks like shitty garbage bag. Like I said, it's what you'd get on a really cheap headphone. However, this does it way better than the really cheap headphones. Like this is, the Dakoni Nugget style is no padding here, no padding here. It's just these two. And then this is new, how far out it goes is new. And that's so you can fold it like that. Mine could fold like that as well, or fold like that. So they do fold. The extension here is all plastic. And it's, it doesn't feel like it's the greatest thing, but I know from nine years of abuse, land parties, sleeping on my arm, that they're gonna last forever. Until the nine year mark rolls around, then the top will crack because that's what mine did. Although, again, this is a redesign. It's actually much lighter than my set was. My set felt dense. Uh, but they're, they're doing a good job making this fold in like several different ways. Again, for studio use, for people on the move. And this is gonna be my new pick for studio headphone. People who get M50s because they have to mix to master, guess what? You don't even get it for that anymore, you fucks. All right, you fucks, I'm sure there's a fucking M50 fan club and I'm gonna shit all over your parade, literally. So M50s people were buying because, oh, Marcus Brownlee loves music on them. He's wrong. You don't like them for me, you shouldn't. 
I was giving them a pass for like mastering. Okay, you put on a headphone, you adjust some levels, you check the microphone, you take off the headphone, then you go put on some enjoyable headphones. That's, that's the way it should work with M50s. These headphones, you could do that exact same thing, and then when it's time to stop working, you tube these. I wasn't 100% sure how, how much I was going to just jack it onto these headphones. How hard am I going to shill today is what Zeos has to think. Like, all right, cute wallpaper, fine. I'll say that they're birthed from Neumann's, fine. Then I plugged it into the tube. And this might be the most difference I've ever heard going from solid state to tube. Now it's a 789, so it's a very clean solid state. And that is a dark voice with modified tubes. If you're asking what tubes are in there, I couldn't tell you. Other people in my patronage chat have said, hey, try this tube, hey, try this tube. And I ended up spending like 60 bucks on tubes. Fuck. There's more of a difference in this solid state of tube than the Neumanns. And the Neumanns and the HD600s are one of the most important headphones you'll ever switch between. I should probably, all right, let's go back to solid state. I'm going to put them on my head. You can see how they're built, how they're going to sit. The pads are that same material. They're very large. They certainly go over, they're definitely over ear. And when I put them on, I, I sound like, I sound like this. This is what I sound to myself. I can't hear shit, Captain. Captain, I can't hear shit, Captain. Like, I, I, the microphonics of the cable gently rubbing against my shirt. I hear my heartbeat. Wait. I hear my heartbeat, you are gone from the world. If you work in an office and Janet won't shut the fuck up and Tim Jr., the, the son of the company owner, is just sitting over there playing with his clacky balls, buy these headphones. Buy these headphones. So they're not immediately uncomfortable. Like the original Sennheiser clamped real hard and they just, it, it wasn't a comfortable experience. They've done something with this that the clamp's more linear. The pads, I think, are the same size, but softer. They're not memory foam. They're still just, they're a butyl rubber because they have to block sound. I'm like, all right, I missed having headphones this closed. These headphones, which are very closed, are not this closed. And then I put on music, and I'm going to turn down those so I don't get copyright infringement. Baba Yaga from John Wick. Can you hear what's playing? Let me crank it. That's loud now. It's real loud. Oh, I'm gonna die. Okay, that's dying loud. Everything is happening as it should be in a very clean manner. And it, it varies between uh, Whiffy, like a, there's like a bit of sound stage. There's like there's like a decent amount of sound stage, too intense and right up in your face because you're monitoring, and that's that's the fault of these headphones. This is a back little one. I don't know if you could even hear what's, and that's just a beautiful like guitar. Like things sound beautiful in this. 20 pros I got because they were quiet and because, oh, listen to this. And I didn't really listen to music back in the day. Like, I wouldn't have known what beautiful sounded like. Now I'm a pretty fucking good judge of beautiful and what needs to happen for sound to be beautiful and not just, you know, the equipment. These are $100 and they sound beautiful. A nice violin sounds like a nice violin. What do the Neumann do better than these? Let's start with that. Because the Neumanns, I think, are definitely more balanced straight down the line. They, they can produce more low-end. These still aren't low-end kings, but at least there's something there now. There used to be nothing there. It was anemic as fuck. And I used them anyway. And I was actually used to play shooters and stuff. And it was fine for shooters. It was intense and close. and uh. But now there's imaging and some soundstage. And... 
it sounds, and this is going to be weird, but it sounds open. It's a super fucking closed headphone. It is the definition now of a closed headphone. 32 decibels of what? What? What is this? Audio file, various artists. Hold on. Oh, I'm I'm making love on a hill in Ireland. I that's that's Erna, Erna, Hemming, Preciso Ricardo. So let's take this song, right? Let's let's take this song. And let's stop monitoring with it. And let's start. The uh the um let me think. Now we're just pouring heavy cream through the ear cups. And everything that was very accurate and flat is now, take it down an octave, bring out the low end. Relax a bit. The sharpness is just pushed back. Everything that was intense and close is now back away, just like the other sounds were. So these are ideal tube headphones. Uh, almost as much as HD 600. Sennheiser now owns three of the world's best tubable headphones. Neumann NDH20, Sennheiser HD 600, ugh, and Sennheiser 280 Pro. Like, you don't expect it. And I wonder how many people are actually tubing these, because here's the thing. If you're buying them, you're buying them for the noise attenuation. And that means you're probably like I was, a young younger person doesn't want their fucking parents and sister, your bitch sister, shut the fuck up. Or the dog or the fucking your computer's loud. I used to keep my loudest computer on my desk, like right here. And it didn't matter because 280 Pros. And I actually think I fucked, like I used to just open one ear to hear what was going on and leave one ear covered. And then when I uncovered the other ear, it was like, whoa, can I even hear straight? And now we fast forward to 2020, which is when this video is coming out. These were purchased in 2019, but it's 2020 and I don't, I don't, I don't, like this is some severe audiophile bullshit, like happening. If I close my eyes and you told me that the headphones I'm currently wearing are a $1,000 set of Focal closed, I'd be like, wow, Focal has made a really fucking good clothes back, you know, that competes with the Stellias and maybe, maybe even like the Allegias. But no, it's a hundred dollar Sennheiser that folds with an attached coiled cord because tube and because magic. I don't get, like, I don't get it. I've never heard such a difference. Like it goes from a very good headphone that I was going to recommend fucking anyway on solid state. You can get these if you're just running solid state. You got a JDS Labs Atom, you got a, a Heresy, you got an Arc, you got a fucking Gashelli Labs Arkle 2.5. Any solid state, you're great. You're fucking great. But as soon as you squeeze a tube into your budget and turn it on, Jesus. You're literally going to see Jesus. Uh, these might be the best tube to have. I, I haven't plugged them into that because I only just figured this out recently and this is sort of covered and I need to put a glass shelf there so I could put th the Solaris on or I could use that adapter or just use my Tor Roger and I don't know what will happen. Want to see something weird? Where are the left and right indicators? Now, keep in mind, this is one thing about headphones. Um, if you ever watch KEXP, which is a YouTube channel, I will link in the description. They have some of the best live recordings that have ever been. London Grammar, Run the Jewels, um, there's a, who else did I download? There's like, they do like, they do like two every week. 
There's so many YouTube videos, and I wish I can access a FLAC archive because YouTube's the only place they exist. They all wear 280 Pros, and they've been wearing the old ones probably. And I guarantee you the artists, because let's face it, audiophiles will always look for the left and right indicator, and artists, they don't know. Most of them are like, yeah, man, it's just like the mixer. You got to like mix my music so that it's beautiful. And um, there's no left and right indicators that are easily findable on this. In fact, I looked for a solid 30 seconds until I spotted them. See that right there? Do you see that little fucking R? There's an R on this foldable shit. And over there is an L. And there's the three dots next to it. So a blind person. Also, you know what blows my mind? It says assembled in USA. It doesn't say where it's made. My old ones were made in Ireland, because that's where Sennheiser used to make their good stuff, was Ireland. These just say assembled in USA. So I'm assuming China, and then they shove it together. They put the pads on, and it's assembled in the USA. But the fact that the, the, that that little... can you, Where the fuck's the lens? Hi. There. That, that little L. That's an L. How the fuck is someone supposed to see that? You got these big, beautiful areas where you could just print L and R. Or up here, or here, or here, or here, or there. Anywhere. That says don't recycle, and that says CE. I don't even know what that is. Consumer Electronics Commission? Why isn't that the left and right? Why did you make it this small, hidden little fucking thing? I'd be better off pulling the driver out and seeing what the serial number is. That's my rant for the bad thing. Everything else is... I I'm even okay with the attached wire. Again, that's nostalgia talking because it just that's the way it is. And that's, you get up and you take your walk and you're like, hmm, I got to go check this light switch out over here. Oh, I'm sorry. Am I pulling my infinitely stretchable fucking wire? It's infinitely stretchable. Why doesn't other, I wish the Neumanns came with one of these that was infinitely stretchable. The one they came with was not as nice. I'll go back. I'm going to shuffle a couple more tracks with um, Run DMC, Christmas and Hollis. Although low end is just... It adds like a solid 15% low end. Not base, all low end. It drags everything out. It makes everything sweeter. It's fucking... Buy them for the solid state. Work up to tubes. If you already have a tube amp, if your collection looks similar to mine, here's the thing. Here's the final words, because I don't want to make these videos insanely long, and I've read they're already insanely long. If your collection looks anything like mine, buy these if you have a tube amp. Because every single one of those acts a little different on a tube amp, and these will act more different than anything you fucking got. The end. Somet sometimes you gotta like put it on to try to fix something, these didn't really need fixing until I put them on a tube and now I realize, holy shit. I wouldn't mix with them on a tube. Again, people are buying them to go master and they're monitoring shit. I wonder how many people out there have actually tubed these. I, I, don't, I don't know. This is, this is it. This is the fucking the big happy Sennheiser family. Here it is. Happy birthday, everybody. Merry New Year. Everyone's doing this shit. So, three of the best tubable headphones... Can't go wrong, can't go wrong, can't go wrong. And this one has a superpower of attenuating everybody 30 decibels away. So if you can get past the attached wire, or if you feel like being a modder, they're only a hundred bucks. They're only a hundred, like you could like buy a set and experiment, make them balanced if you want. Please don't, oh, they had so much space. Look how much space you'd have to make another connector there and install it. This would be the easiest pair of headphones to balance in the world. But most of my tube amps aren't balanced, and I'm probably going to run them mostly balanced. i got to stop. That wallpaper's in the description. And if you want to support this channel, see these videos early, you have the option of Subscribestar or Patreon. Uh, either one is fine. They both have different quirks. I love being able to pin a message on Subscribestar, but I can't reply to comments directly, which is like, ooh. And then Patreon just has the funkiest messaging system, and they do have tags, which is nice. But people, are, you know, whatever. So either one you go to, $5 a month, you get to see all these videos early. You get to ask me any questions you want uh, through Patreon or through Subscribestar. I have to make sure I get emails from Subscribestar. Um, 
and then when the yard sale comes at the end of the month, you should be able to buy something that's in the yard sale. Now, other those will be in the yard sale. Those will be in the yard. Those might be in the yard sale. Definitely those. Probably those. The the a couple. This amp will be in the yard sale. All those will. Most of those will be in the yard sale. So first to the tenth of every month, if you are a five dollar supporter, you get to bid on anything. The auction comes out. I explain what it is. Free shipping content in the United States. Half shipping international. If you're international, you can get any of the things I'm talking about. It just costs you a little more because you got to half pay half shipping. The other tier above that, the ten dollar tiers, get you into the private Telegram chat. Again, you can do that either on Patreon or Subscribestar. It doesn't make a difference. Every each one has the same benefits. They're just weird for me to deal with. So. Check those out. There's higher tiers for people who want to like be Sylvester Stallone. Trust me, one of those tiers has a picture of Sylvester Stallone in it, and that's all you got to know. And all, of course, you could access all the wallpaper archives and then look up the original artists using Sauce Now or IQDB, and you can go and support them directly. I don't charge for the wallpapers; I just gathered them. Uh, this this has been a this is a day, man. This is a fucking day. Like I was unexpecting to love these as much as I do because of my history with them. Nine years. If they sounded like they do on this tube and they sounded like that for nine years, this would have been a very different channel. It would have started, I would have put on half those headphones and gone, eh, but Sennheiser HD 280 Pros, bro. And they have noise attenuation and it's cool extending attached wire. Anyway, that's it. Uh, check out Hi-Fi Guides. I'll make the post for this available. These will definitely be showing up now on the HiFiGuides.com list. And you could throw them right up there. Sivga double out sixes, okay. But you want to try something a little bit more closed that works well on a tube? Boom. And as far as comfort goes, they're comfortable. I used to give them hours, hours. But you may get bored of these pads. So in the future, I might start pad swapping these. I know what that's going to do to the sound. It's going to change it. And I, Sennheiser is notorious. When you change a pad on a Sennheiser headphone, it's never the same. So that's it. Sound demo's in the description. I actually did the sound demo before I did this video. And I kind of wish I would have done the sound demo with the tube. I didn't even think to. It didn't even dawn on me. So that's that. I'm going to go run DMC some more or Frozen OST, Corpse Bride. Bear McCreary, oh, Die Hard 5, I guess I'll live with that. Anyway, I'll see you all tomorrow for the sound demo and the new one after that. What year is it? How is this working? I don't even fucking understand.